Hello and welcome to what I consider to be one of the most important shows that we've been doing for several years now and will continue to do so in the future. What's going to happen in 2023? What's going to happen in this, this year ahead? And what are Rich's forecasts for that? And remember, 97% right in uh, 2022, last year, and now 100% right. Okay, the first thing, Ruchi, that you're forecasting is there's going to be a long grind. By long grind, you mean there's going to be no bust and no boom. It's not going to be a dramatic recession. You're saying there's shorter recessions now because of easy money, higher government spending, and low interest rates. And if you look at the shorter recessions, according to Ruchir, in pre-World War II, the percentage of time that there were recessions was 44%, nearly half the time the economy was in a recession. Then from uh, World War II to 1979, Almost 20%, 9, 18% of the time was in recession. That's high. Now, because of all this easy money era, it's down to half that and one-fourth what it was. This is a huge change. Yeah, I think that this has a lot to do with the role of government stimulus, government intervention, that in the pre-war era, there was very little of government intervention uh, in yes. economies such as the United States or the developed economies of that era. Right. And it's really since then that you've seen much more government intervention and especially in the last three four decades as inflation was declining every, every time there was the slightest trouble uh, because inflation was low and falling the governments and central banks were able to come out there and put out a lot of stimulus and that right. was particularly true in the pandemic that we saw stimulus like never before during the pandemic finally i just wanted to look at your data on this long grind and what are the implications for india and they're quite important, very, very serious, actually. Because as the world slows, so will India slow down. Because historically, India's growth rate, according to all Ruchir and his team's data, India has been only slightly above the world in terms of growth rate. So if the world slows down, India's growth rate is unlikely to be above 5%. Now, the dollar has been rising, rising compared to all other currencies. But you're saying, you're seeing the peak of the dollar. If we look at Ruchir's data, this is what it looks like. Every time the dollar rises, it's followed by a downturn. Look at those three. And you're now hitting 11 years, which is much longer than peaks that dollar has taken to reach. 11 years is taken. So you're saying we're going to have a downturn now of the dollar, which means rupee will strengthen in comparison, or all other currencies. Yeah, I think that, you know, in terms of the, well, the rupee has weakened significantly against the dollar over the last 75 years, as we last spoke yes, about. Yes, yes. Uh, but the rupee's depreciation against the dollar has been particularly sharp over the last couple of years. Yes. And I think that that's likely to slow down. Now, the next forecast you say that America, when America goes down, which it will, the rest of the world will rise. And... The data from that is actually also fascinating. This America down, the rest of the world rises. First of all, America down uh, and the rest of the world up because U.S. stock market values are disproportionately high. I, I never realized that. It's got 4% of the population and it's punching well above its weight. It's got 4% of the population and 60% of the market cap. That is just out of whack. And 25% of GDP... And still, that's the economy, and still 60% of the uh, stock market capitalization. Yeah, America's always had the most dominant, best-performing yes. stock market in the world right. over a very long term, right? If you look at the last 100 years or so, right. America has been top of the uh, charts. It really has a true capitalist system that way. But what's happened in the last decade is extraordinary, uh, which is that the American stock market has done so well, has outperformed all of the global stock markets by such a massive amount that we have the situation today where even though America is only 25% of the global economy and that share yeah. has remained stable for a while now, America's share of global stock market values is 60% and that's never happened before. And the other point you make in your next forecast is that tech stocks are going to shrink and if you look at that, that's what's happened uh, after decades in which big tech firms dominate, they shrink in the next decade. That's historically... If you, these are top 10 firms by market capitalization. If 
You're in the top 10 in one decade. There's a high probability you will not be in the top 10 in the next decade. Just 10 years and it can transform everything. Yeah, so I think that this is very telling that this is uh, by market value, the top 10 firms in the world at the beginning of every decade. And as you can see that eight or nine of them change. The tech slowdown will hit India as well. In fact, it already has hit it. In 2021, 35% of all capital raised through IPOs were tech. 2022, that became 2%. And that you think that pattern is going to continue. Yeah, uh, I think that you know this was a climax we had in 2021. So in a, many ways for, for people who have lived through this, there are shades of this or what happened in 2001 or so. Right. Which is you got a big tech boom, boom yeah. and then you had a bit of a bust. And even though technology is here to stay, to be there for a long period of time, but it will take a while now for this recovery to happen, for people to digest uh, this mini bus that's happening. Now. And I did want to censor this next forecast of yours because you're saying more money for TV doesn't mean better TV. Less money means better TV. Just have a look at this data and don't take this seriously. TV needs money. In fact, less money has meant better TV. Money spent on TV content has surged from 2018 to in four years, from 89 billion to 142 billion, but the content has not done well. Just look at his uh, data on content. Look at that. This is ratings of content and shows. It's just a downward slide. Your next point is about people are outsourcing, no longer to China, outsourcing outside China. And uh, that could be a big opportunity for countries in Asia, etc. If you look at outsourcing to China from America, China loses share of US imports. It's gone down by about 4%. And the rest of Asia has gained. Uh, India has only made a small gain. So China, uh, outsourcing to China has gone down 4%. Other countries, excluding China in Asia, have gone up 4%. India so far, the outsourcing has only gone up 0.2%. Your next point is that there's going to be a return to orthodoxy. And what do you mean by that? Just look at this. 10 developing countries with biggest twin deficits. You mean fiscal plus external uh, account deficit. And India's in the top 10 of the world in terms of... So this is a worry. And now orthodoxy means change that. Yeah, no, in terms of... Uh, the point I'm making here is this, which is that because the era of easy money is over, interest rates have gone higher everywhere and financing in general has become much more right. difficult. In this environment, the scope for policymakers to do something too experimental, something away from what is defined as economic orthodoxy, which is that you need to follow a tight fiscal policy, you need to have uh, relatively high interest rates. If you try to do something different, the market's going to come and punish you. When the things are going well, people look for black swans. We've known about that. But now bluebirds, we, want, uh, we should look out for. And the gloom that's being forecast that you, you highlight here is that not since surveys began have forecasters thought that a recession is going to come more likely than it is now. The probability of a recession is the highest it's been for 50 years that forecasters are now, of course, economists are invariably wrong, especially Bengali forecasters, but we do forecast at least, and we are wrong. Uh, but now, a large, almost 50, over 40% are saying there will be a recession. Yeah, so the context here is this. One, as you point out, that in the history of surveys, economists have never forecast a recession. So if a recession does happen in 2023, it'll be the first time in history of surveys that economists actually called a recession.